It is your boy Tyler here with Mom's Basement MMA. I'm on episode 89. I've made it this far. I haven't gotten canceled yet. Anyone who's trying to cancel me, you'll never will. Happen. You fucking <laughs> never will. You'll never cancel me. Um, I'm, I'm here. I have uh, two freaking uh, Greek gods I'm talking to today. Uh, Ryan Rizko and Bill Markle. These guys uh, they're just, I don't know what else to say. They're just God mode, man. They just freaking line them all up. They're all freaking done. How are you guys doing? My Nick Catone uh, fighters, wrestlers. Good. We're, we're ready to get weird on the podcast. <laughs> well, let's, we're living in strange times right now. Very sure. strange times. Last night, uh, fucking uh, Francis uh, Usman, you know, I don't know what the fuck that was. Francis <laughs> Novara Nero. We were yeah. Really- Yes, talk. That was like the first time we just started talking about, dude. Him. Like, rip. like somebody put that guy in, a, in like you know the, a singlet or whatever. Like it's just freaking bizarre. Like who would have thought he was gonna win that way? We got uh, a YouTuber who's like sadly the most like most popular boxer on the planet, and he hasn't even actually fought an actual boxer. Amanda Nunez, like the goat, gets freaking choked out by some random. The Patriots suck now. Uh, nobody money. Nobody wants money anymore. They all want <laughs> cryptocurrency. And bottled water, you have to pay a dollar for, but porn is free. So shit mm-hmm. is fucking crazy. And okay. I, ha- I have to. I have to ask. If you're an alien, are we even worth invading anymore? No shot. They're I gonna look so. at us and run away. Yeah, don't so. <laughs> you don't I think don't so? It could be free entertainment, though. You yeah. Know? Who says you know? Who says they want to invade? Maybe they just want to observe. You yeah. Know? I mean, it's uh, it, it's kind of wild. Like I'm, I'm, I'm sitting. I think I'm just watching the show, Ryan. I think I'm with you. I, I think you just let it keep playing out because uh, it's freaking wild, man. It's freaking crazy. Strange times, strange times, the, man. And Ganu thing is just um, it was crazy to us too because it wasn't like you can say you know okay he made small improvements in his grappling like. He's grappling like as if he came up grappling. Like the little details in there, mm-hmm. was, I was really, really impressed. Did really you like? Impressed. Were you, do you were you entertained by that fight? Hundred percent. Yeah, Absolutely. for sure. Yeah, dude, big slam, big slam, dude, big slam. Yeah. freaking body God, slam, right? Up. God yeah. dropping back for like, like he's going for the heel hook. I'm like, bro, it was what's going on here? I did not expect either word. I crazy. okay. I'm I'm gonna be completely honest. I love. Mixed martial arts. I love grappling. I like the jujitsu. I do, but I wanted to see. I, I didn't want to see that shit. I wanted to see two rhinos <laughs> going at each other. I wanted to see somebody get decapitated. It didn't happen. I was kind of pissed off. I'm not gonna lie. I, I thought Francis was gonna knock it. I thought it was like stylistic wise, like Don is the superior martial artist in theory, yeah. like going into the fight. Not yeah. now after watching it. Gon's more athletic, more technical, better. Like he sees everything coming, he moves, faints. I really like his striking. I thought Francis though just like has that crazy one hitter quitter that it was gonna be like once that right hand landed, it was gonna be game over and knock his head into a different planet. But dude, Gon was good movement, not getting hit, not rolling with them, and then Francis. Oh, dude! Like I thought um, when it got to a point where you know Cyril was on his back like he just looked lost like he didn't really know what the fuck he was gonna do um and, saw, and, and good luck getting Francis Ngannou off you he was probably 285 pounds at that point yeah bro for sure he I was him. most impressed that he was able to keep that pace going though for multiple rounds like it wasn't like he just came out and wrestled and like I said like he was consistent with it too right super yeah and um the, there's a lot of jabber about him looking winded looking tired but he may have been breathing heavily but like he didn't look that tired to me like I mean, five rounds. Like you're yeah. gonna be tired. You're fighting another man. You know, you're fighting number uh, number one guy in the world. Like you're gonna be tired. You know, I, I, I thought I, very well. Yeah, I thought. I, you know, I. But I'm not gonna lie. I was butt hurt. But going back to the previous fight, um, I I I liked that fight. Moreno and Figgy. That was a freaking banger, man. Good fight. They both um, came bang. Moreno did not step back. Figgy did not step back. Big punches. Good movement. I. Personally, I could. I'm happy. I'm okay with the decision. But I thought Moreno pulled off the win. Like I'm okay either or. It was that close of a fight. But I did think like when they're about to announce the winner, I would have gave it to Moreno, but just slightly on the slightest. Yeah, slightest yeah. Of- That's fair. Um, I, 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 
I think I'm on the other side of the spectrum. I had Figgy doing just barely enough, but well, I think the biggest thing that surprised me is it wasn't a split. It probably should have been. Um, yeah. and, and the fact that it was a UD, uh, that was very surprising to me. Mm-hmm. And what it, they're going to have to fight like for the fourth time. And you know what? What happens if, if Moreno wins? Do they fight a fifth time? No. <laughs> it's like draw, win, win. Whoever wins the fourth one, call yeah. it a day. Yeah. I was very surprised that Figgy was able to have fire around cardio like that. And he, he didn't look tired at all. Yeah. And like He's known for having tough weight cuts. He gassed out the second fight. I was like, I did not expect him to be able to do five hard rounds like that and look the way that he did. I, I think the thing that I was most happy about is post-fight when Figgy – just went out and said, you know, hey, he's a good fighter. I'll fight him in Mexico. I'm just yeah, like, oh, like shit, I- okay. Like, nope. you know, th- they're both good guys. Like, they really mm-hmm. are. They're both good guys. And it's like one of those things where it's it's hard to root against either one of those guys, at least for yeah, me. For sure. But, you know, that's the fighting game, man. Somebody's got to lose. And I wanted to kind of pivot back to the Strange Times intro I cut because it was really okay. good. And uh, I thought about that. You know, when I'm in the shower, I'm like, all right, how can I talk about something weird and bring it into fighting? We did it, A+. plus. But the strange times part, social media in particular, one I kind of want to hit on. Because we're living in a day and age where if you are a public figure of any sort, if you're a fighter, if you're an actor, if you're in entertainment, you, you have to. It's just part of the game. And my question for you guys is like when you get up and you're getting ready to like go into fights and fight modes on, I bet you guys get all kinds of crazy shit that gets thrown at you. I bet people blow up your DMs and I would hope that most of it's positive. But judging from what I get, dude, (laughs) like people send me crazy shit every day. And I'm wondering from you guys, like, does it get freaking crazy before or after a fight? Like, in terms of like the mean things people might say to you. Um, I feel like more the the week of the fight, my social media, like I'll get more interaction because obviously, like the fight posters out or the promotions, you know, putting it out there. So, uh, like a ton of people are reposting it, so my outreach gets bigger. But I think overall, it's positive stuff, mm-hmm. you know. But at like the random account that'll like message me and be like, "I hope you die" or something <laughs> like sure. that. And I'm cool with it, you know, but it's, it's for so far, it's been like far and few, you know? Oh, that's good. Um, more so in like comment sections, you know, like yeah. if I fight um, and there's like a live stream, there's people commenting, but more, more than likely it's somebody who's just supporting the guy that I'm fighting. It's not somebody who's like just signing in to like talk shit to me, you know, mm-hmm. but, but luckily it's just been, it's been overall positive, you know? I've definitely had some weird like comments where it's like people that I personally know that I feel like I feel like there's like an etiquette of like things you should say to a fighter versus what you shouldn't say to a fighter like right before a fight. And one of the like few things that I feel every fight there's always one person that like will message me like I hope you don't get knocked the fuck out. That and is just, like no, I'm that just is like true. thanks, bud. I'm like about to go out there in a few minutes, but you know really <laughs> not like I appreciate, but yeah. it just comes out. That yeah, way, like, it just know? comes out like yeah, dude. Let's hope you don't get knocked out. Or, like yeah, let's hope, man. I really hope. <laughs> <laughs> like, over, like overly like look into your opponent you know what i mean and it's like at that point like you're just ready to go you know what they're about you know what you're about and it's like ah, i don't know that guy's got good grappling like you sure you want to take him down i'm like why would you say this like, <laughs> you, know? like you know what a perfect response to that would be You'd be like oh fuck he does like oh my god me and my coaches like, always look into this so far. oh my yeah. god fuck the game plan <laughs> <laughs> like I, I think I would. I think that'd be absolutely yeah. perfect. I say all that because it's wild, man. Like just this morning, um, like I got like it was some definitely an IG burner account for sure, and it it could be somebody I know. But I got a DM. They're like, "Yo, man, take off that stupid fucking green jacket." And I'm like, "Fuck you, man. This is my fleece, baby. I'm comfortable." Like it's uh, fleece. Come on, like, what more do you have? Yeah, I'm, dude, I'm in my basement. It's cold as fuck down here. Like, what do you yeah. want from me? But, like, somebody took the time out of their day to write that shit to me. Like, yeah, just, like, like I, you know, I'm like, if that's, like, what they got going for themselves, and, like, that's going to make their day, then, like, you can have it, buddy. You know what I mean? Like, it's fine. It's uh, fine to go out of your way to make a burner account to say something like that. Yeah, like, you know, there was, like, it was, like, the IG silhouette, and it was, like, the name is, like, Joey, like, and then like five million numbers after it so it's like okay that's your like ig burner account really um, awesome. 
you know, you guys could have just told me you don't like the fucking jacket, okay? You guys could have just fucking told me. <laughs> we didn't have the heart. We had the, we had the balls to say it to your face, honestly, man. We were like, you know what? <laughs> It's just, it's wild, man. And like, I think the most petty thing I've seen happen is this happened actually this morning. I went on my YouTube page um, and I was getting ready to like upload a video. And I noticed like there's like one guy who took the time. There's like, keep in mind, there's almost like a hundred videos I have up there. This guy took the time to go to like every single one of my videos and like, hit the i don't like this button i'm just like that is like petty with a capital p and i respect the hustle i'm not even mad at you <laughs> i mean what, what i mean it's just it's just crazy that i'm i i, I it, it's just weird that like people would take the time out of their day to like talk shit about me and like i don't even fight like who like why would you talk shit about me like it's just it's fucking wild and it's got to be like a million times worse like when you fight like go to any ufc fighters like instagram page if they lose a fight and read what these idiots oh, have to say it's terrible man it's brutal, it's brutal. They, but i feel like that's how you know you're on, on your way though you know what i mean for you yeah. and for everybody else like if somebody's good taking the time out of the day to put negative connotations like on your stuff then it's like i feel like that's a good sign overall you know what i mean and it's i think it's just one of those things where, like you have to have one um you have to pro you have to promote yourself you have to get your name out there and you know it, it's a necessary evil i feel and there's another aspect of this i wanted to ask you guys specifically for both of you um ryan i know you're a pro and you've been a pro for a little while bill i know you're probably going to be going pro soon mm -hmm. i feel like fighting's the easy part right like your your nine minutes or your 15 minutes or whatever that's the easy part Getting a fight, that's the hard part. The training camp, that's the hard part. Um, dealing with uh, shady promotions, that's the hard part. Um, all the other fighting politics that go into it. Like, there is this underbelly of the fight game that 99% of people don't even have a clue about. They have no clue about any of the stuff I'm talking about. Can you tell me, like, what are some of the things that you've learned? Like, what are some of the crazy stuff that you've seen that... Uh, like young fighters in particular should know about before they even think about doing this competitively. Uh, are you going first? No, no, no. Yeah, but... uh, I mean, I, just the, you're right though. The whole thing is exhausting and draining. It's like not, not that the fighting is the easiest part, but it's easier than the rest of the journey it takes to get to the fight. Because I mean, you hit the nail on the head, but like you have shady promoters, you have to worry about ticket sales and just for stuff like that, like in general, like the stress of going to your fight week, like making sure all your stuff is organized. Like you have, um, you know, you have to collect money. You have to be accounted for all that money. And then also you get people the week of the fight that are like, wait, what time are you fighting or where's the venue? And it's like, dude, we had six weeks. Like you could have asked this before, you know, um, the weight cut, the medicals, the amount of money that you have to put into your fight camp. And then, you know, you have that in comparison to the money that you're not making because you're not working as much to be able to afford yourself the time to train, you know, um, the outside influences, like it's a whole workup for me my favorite feeling is like when I'm backstage and my hands are wrapped, I have gloves on. We did our warm up already. So I'm like, every single box is checked. And I'm like, the only thing left for me to do is just make the walk and go out for the fight. Like mm -hmm. that to me is like, that's, that's the best feeling in the world because the six weeks leading up to it, it just filled with bullshit you know, the entire time. Yeah, I, um, I, 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 would... I love the training aspect. That's great. I love pushing myself, you know, past my limits and, you know, studying and just getting better uh, overall. But all the other stuff that comes with it. And you know, the way that the world is today too, like we're talking about like YouTube sensations, boxing and this and that, like you have to promote yourself. It's like, it's like almost like everybody loves to see you fight, but everything that leads you to the fight, like takes away from your ability to fight. You know what I mean? Your concentration, your focus, your mental stress. So it's definitely like a balancing act with it all, you know? For sure. And like how you're saying, like it's balancing out everything. And it's like, I feel like a lot of fighters balance more on the social media, trying to look like cool and flashy for social media, but then they're not putting in the hours in the training room. And it's like trying to find that like middle ground where I feel like even like, for instance, like myself, I try to balance out where it's like, should I be posting something on social media more? Should I be posting my training more? Should I be posting me training other people more? Like trying to find a balancing act of everything where in reality, all we really want to do is train and fight. I'm like, oh, 
really that yeah. like, if sponsorship and every, if sponsorships and money and everything else was an issue, I probably wouldn't have social media. Like Maybe I would just be laying yeah. low, training, doing my own thing. But because I got to promote the fight, I got to reach out to sponsors. I got to reach out to people who want tickets. It's like, I got to be active on social media. I got to be posting. Like, okay. It's easier for me to post on Instagram and on Facebook. Like, hey, I'm fighting in eight weeks versus me reaching out to 2,000 people, 3,000 people. But hey, fighting three weeks, who wants to come? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think like I, I think get like getting to a bigger platform like UFC belts or UFC whatever. Obviously, it's tougher because you're facing the best in the world. But I think overall, it makes the experience of fighting easier because like you don't have to worry about ticket sales. Like if your fight gets pulled, you don't have to get money back or talk to a promoter. The uh, promoter for you, it's like it just does it all itself. So it's just like that to me is the goal is to be able to just 100 percent solely focus on fighting. You know. Um, all the other stuff is just like it's it's a headache, but it comes with the territory. So if you're not willing, then it's like you might not get to where you're going to go. You know, I'm trying to adopt that whole like uh, posting ghost culture where like mm -hmm. I know I need to put something on social media, so like I put it on and just like put the phone down, like not read the comments, not comment back, and just focus on what I have to do, but just put it out there and then just leave it alone. You know? Yeah. No, I I completely understand. It definitely makes sense. Like. I like that. I like that phrase, like posting ghost. And I would be lying if I said I didn't do that. I just didn't have a badass name for it. But I guess that's what I do too. <laughs> Joe Rogan and like uh, I listen to like Joe Rogan obviously a lot, but then I also listen. I also listen like Brandon Shops, like Fighter the Kid. Oh wait, what the fuck? Okay. Oh sorry. We're good. <laughs> I have no idea. Oh. Um, <laughs> I listen to like the Fighter the Kid podcast a lot with Brandon Shop, and they always say like post a ghost, and like it's like the only way to deal with it, especially at that level. Because like think about it, they're reaching out to hundreds of thousands and millions mm -hmm. of people or whenever they post something. So it's like a majority of them is going to be negative comments. A majority of them probably won't even make sense. Will be bots saying stupid stuff or just like stuff that doesn't make any sense. So it's like post ghost, call it a day. I, I do feel, what you got to do. I feel like we're also like we're more about like just letting our actions show. Like people love the show. People love being on social media. People like promoting themselves and making themselves look better than what they are. And I feel like it's just a tough time to be like a fighter now, like a real fighter. Cause I feel like we're on the opposite end. Like we said before, like if it didn't have to do with sponsorship, we didn't have to promote ourselves. We wouldn't even have, you know? So it's like, it's so painful sometimes to see guys that like you see in the training room, or you see fighting, you're like, these guys aren't that good, but they're getting way more recognition than they deserve. Cause they're just like, pumping themselves on social media mm -hmm. then you have to look back at yourself and you're like are we doing it wrong should we be promoting ourselves more but then we're like well i i would think that training is the most optimal thing to do so it's it's again it's just a, it's a strange time it's super where you see facebook fighters instagram fighters it's just like youtube every, fighters, yeah everybody's TikTok. a tough guy now yeah. you know it's just I, I don't like the plastic facade and like the disingenuous people on both sides of the fence, right? Because they're they exist in both spectrums, not necessarily just fighters. I'm talking about like people who cover it, like me. It's like, mm -hmm. I, I, pretending I'm one of you guys. It's like, okay, I get a call, right? I'm on Bellator, and now I've quote unquote made it. It's like, where the fuck were you when I was trying to fucking sell tickets? And yeah. I could have used a show to help me promote one of my fights. I wasn't good enough for you to talk to you then, but now all of a sudden I'm good enough. Go fuck yourself. I'm not talking to you. That's what I would do. Like unless I had management or something that forced me to do it. Yeah. <laughs> unless you get paid. <laughs> right, right, right. There's so, there's some disingenuous fighters too. Like you 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 listen to some of their interviews. You listen to some of the weird things that they say. I don't know. It's just kind of weird. It's like, why is it so bad to say you know a little bit about your opponent? Why is it bad to say that your opponent's good? Why yeah, is it? Yeah. Well, you know, why is it bad to say like, no, this may not have been my best training camp, but I'll be ready to go. Like, why can't people say that? Yeah, I feel like people always downplay their opponents too, and I feel like that's like a very weird thing to do. Where it's like. Because no matter what, you're going to fight. Like, the person's going to hit me. The person's going to do yeah. something to harm me in any way. So it's like, I'm downplaying them. I'm like, oh, their striking's horrible. Their jiu-jitsu's horrible. Their wrestling's horrible. This person gets one takedown on me. What does that say about my wrestling? Like, I just said their wrestling's horrible. It really wasn't horrible. Just wow. be honest. Like, I would fully admit, if like, all right, I'm fighting a guy who has good wrestling. Like, I'll be straight up like, oh, he might have good wrestling, might have good grappling. I think I have an advantage of striking. And I, that's it's an honest assessment. And it's not downplaying him as a fighter. It's just being an honest assessment about how my skills versus his skills. It doesn't have to be like, he's horrible. I'm going to knock him out in the first <laughs> round. Right. He shoots up. I'm going to score. I shoot on him. I score. Right. You know? right. I think I do. You know? And I think it's like somebody who's trying to convince themselves that they're better, you know, right. or they're better opponent. I think it comes down to confidence a lot. And they feel that it's, 
maybe a, a moment of weakness if they're talking about their opponent's strengths, you know. But I'm like, but if you truly believe in yourself, you can recognize their strengths or recognize where they're good at. And you're like, yeah, but it still doesn't matter. I'm still going to go out there and get my hand raised. You know, I'm going to find a way. Right. And like, it's always refreshing when I talk to fighters and they say something uh, that's real and genuine about their opponent. Like, hey, and it it doesn't necessarily mean that they like them or they have to like them. They could be like, hey, this guy's an asshole, but he hits hard. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. cool. Like, that's all you had to say. Like, that's cool. <laughs> Um, you know, I don't think it's a bad thing, and I, I personally kind of roll my eyes when I hear that, like, oh, the guy's a jiu-jitsu guy? I didn't even fucking know that. I'm like, bro, yes, you did. <laughs> like, you, dude, you went on Tapology as soon as you heard the name. You do. You, you did. <laughs> like, it's funny. Most people, it's like, when you get the fight, usually your coach or management, they literally send you the name with their Tapology account. Like, oh, are you willing to fight so-and-so? Here's their Tapology. Yeah. So you know right off the bat, oh, right. like, Yes, yeah, you're looking, yeah, yeah. Then you're looking into all their opponents and their opponents' records and who their opponents fought. Like you know the scoop within five minutes. Like that's now. that's normal. That's no why is that bad? Why can't you just say that? Like, it's not a big deal. Yeah, everyone does it. Like who cares? I don't I don't get it. I think it's like one of those things where it's like fighters are like how would I like assess you guys? Like, there's something about like being like slightly delusional. You have to be to do what you yeah. do. You have to be like you have to be built a certain way for this game. Like, if you don't go into that cage thinking you're the best and you're gonna freaking bury that guy, you have no business being in there. Like, if you're going into a cage and you're thinking like I'm gonna get murked, I might be disfigured coming out of this. I might be brain dead. This is not the sport for you. You have to like build yourself up a certain way. And you have to be confident. I just feel like some guys take it way too far. It, it, it comes to a point where it's almost like Colby Covington esque, where it's just like, yeah. bro, you're trying way, so, you're trying so so hard, and you're you're kind of becoming a joke a little bit. The Connor culture, where Connor was super brash and confident, but right. it was like like that was already a part of his personality. Where when he was doing it, it wasn't like, um, it was, it was, yeah, it wasn't forced. It was just who he was already, probably how he joked around with his friends and talks. Mm -hmm. So it came out natural, but I feel like everybody's trying to run with that play playbook and it's coming out disingenuous because if you're not really like that then it's like people can tell like that you know right well i think i thought the uh uh the last press conference leading up to the uh poirier fight the most recent one he fell flat like he was just weird maybe he was uh yeah the last one was because well, he went back and forth with it i think it's because his confidence probably got ruined where it's like he got like knocked out by dp in the second fight where it was like right. he's been Nice guy, second fight gets finished. And then the third fight, he's like, I got to go back and be an asshole. But then it's like, it's not working out for him. He's just not there anymore. Yeah. He just got knocked out. He's like, oh, the shit. Like, yeah, the ship completely sailed at that point. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I want to shift gears, fellas. I want to talk about both of you specifically. And just this past uh, year that's gone by, both of you guys had, uh, I would say, successful 2021s. Bill, <laughs> you, uh, you fought twice. You won twice. And Ryan, you fought three times and, and you won two out of three. That's not bad. That's good, I'd say. Like all in all, that's you you guys accomplished a lot and you it's not like you're fighting cans, you're fighting some of these tough dudes. Uh, and right, I, I've already seen all Bill's fights, but I watched yours, Ryan, last night at like three in the morning. I should say this morning, because I just couldn't go to bed. Um, I was pissed off I spent seventy five dollars on that bullshit. But yeah. anyway, <laughs> I didn't spend fucking seventy five dollars to watch freaking Francis and Ganu lay and pray. Francis stole a nade off out of nowhere. And he's like Francis fighting at Dagestan. <laughs> but anyway, uh, going back, like I watched uh, your fight Ryan against Golden. That was a really good fight. That was a really slick choke. I really liked that. Um, Bill, I watched you. I watched you fight. I watched your fight live uh, against Philon uh, this past spring, and then I think I. I missed the Floyd one because I don't think I I don't know if that one was uh, televised or not. not but you had to like, like fight TV, yeah, fight TV, and you had to like it was like a pay per view order, but it was a good fight, you know. Um, Floyd was a tough opponent, you know. I'm not gonna talk shit about him. It's uh, yeah. good jiu jitsu, good grappling, uh, tough. I I said in the post fight interview afterwards where it's like uh, a lot of people want to fight pretty, and me and him, one of us want to fight pretty. We both like come in to fight, not just to come out, go out there and say that we're fighters. So it was a good fight. I broke my hand in the uh, first round. Still was able to pull off the win, and now looking to get back inside the cage, March twenty sixth for Maverick fighting for their for uh, belt for, for the belt, belt for their one thirty five belt. And and but, Bill, I, I wanted to yeah. kind of start with you. 
I, I'm I'm wondering like you you're you're four and one, Better Bill. and Better Bill. I look at how you've been able to like beat the opponents you've competed against in the manner in which you have. You're winning these fights convincingly. You drop your very first fight, um, but you've been on a tear ever since. And after you win um, the belt here for your next fight in March or whatever. Like what else do you have to prove at this level? Is the is the plan to like go pro after this fight? And I'm fighting a tough kid named uh, Zach Haynes. He's seven two. He was like a wrestler, sambo guy. Um, good wrestling, tough, comes forward, and we're gonna fight for the belt. And I'm gonna win. And then I hope to start my professional career after that. We'll hopefully, try to make my pro debut like July summertime. But this is for sure gonna be my last amateur belt. I talked about it with my coaches and online. Uh, they want to like test out my hand a little bit, see how my hand's feeling after like you know broke it, had to get surgery the whole nine, and then. Uh, but this is for sure gonna be my last Sammy fight. I'm looking forward to have like my last Sammy fight, call it a career, uh, amateur career, and then start my professional career. I've been looking forward to this since I was a kid, and like I've been training with like high level pros since I was like 18 years old and my before time. That. Just before that, in reality, but like I feel like I started like my first fight. I was 18, like first time I made fight at least I was 18, mm -hmm. and. Time to call it amateur career and start moving forward. I think you've put in your time. I think you've paid the the you've you've paid your dues really. And I understand that just because you go pro, it doesn't mean that you know the platinum yacht's gonna be in the driveway. I understand the grind. I I get it. I know what some of y'all are getting paid at the pro level, <laughs> and um, <laughs> I'm not gonna say it. I'll just say like if you don't know, um, if you're not a fighter and you don't know, I promise you, it's not a lot. I promise you it's not. You can... People see us like on UFC Fight Fest and they think we're making like tens of thousands of dollars and I'm just like, you're right, you're right, there's no problem with it. Yeah, um... Yeah, uh, I, I'm not even gonna... I'm not gonna comment, but I, I know what it is and uh, it's not a lot and I promise there's a lot... There's way easier ways to make that person out doing something yeah. not in fighting. Um, not yeah. yeah. But you've put you put your time in though, Bill, and I think like it, it's one of those things where it would probably help you out financially to at least cut down on some of these expenses you've been piling up. Even like because I have to pay for my like this upcoming fight, I have to pay for my medicals, and my medicals could cost me like three four hundred dollars with me not getting paid for the fight at the end of the day. Like I'll make money off ticket sales, I'm doing T-shirts this time around, so I'll make money that end, but still like you know it's. Three to four hundred dollars just to get my fight medicals done for a fight. I'm not getting t-shirts, food, food, recovery, your training. It's just like you yes. have the deficit. Time you fight and win, you're still not making back the money you put into your camp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, I, I, absolutely. I would imagine, Bill, for you, like easily. I bet you it's more than that. But let's just say you're into every single fight a, a grand out of pocket at least. That's easy. easy like easy. honestly, it's like it's. I start teaching. Less. I start doing less PTs. I start like my actual like what I do to make money day to day. I'm doing less hours. Kind of more focused on training. Like right. I was training every single day, no matter what. Even if I have a fight or I don't have a fight. But obviously, when I'm in camp, I'm just picking up everything a little bit more. Like trying to fine tune my training schedule, fine tuning like the days go hard, the days I go light, and just trying to make sure that I have more training, more optimal training. But that also means that I'm working less, and that's going to cut back on my day to day income. So it's like for sure every time I fight, I'm losing a good amount of money. Where it's like I'm okay with it, especially when it comes to fight week. On it, I'm not okay with it. But when, <laughs> when it comes to fight week, at that point, I really don't care. I'll blow all the money possible at all, whatever needs to be done. Where yeah. it's like if I need to pay for this last minute, swipe. If I need yeah. this last minute, swipe. I don't right. care. Just get me to fight at that point. But two weeks after your fight, you're like fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Everyone wants the whole pass. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you get like that text message from your credit card company saying, like, "Hey, man, uh, remember that bill?" And you're like, "Oh, man, yeah, yeah I do." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like uh, just the lengths that some of you guys go through to do this, uh, it's it's insane. I think you have the benefit of geography on your side, though. You being in New Jersey, there's a lot of opportunities there compared to some of the other things I hear. There are some people that live in these. Uh, you know, they live in the Midwest or they live in the country and it's like, yeah, I'm going to drive six hours for a fight. I'm like, Jesus. Like, and they do, they do it and they don't complain. They're like, yeah, man, like, I'll just, don't worry, man. I'm going to put on my sweatsuit and I'm going to, you know, drive. I'm like, well, don't fucking pass out. Don't drive. Like you should yeah. sit in the back. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Bill, 
I, 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 <laughs> Bill, um, one last question just about your AME career thus far. You've We've already kind of set the table for your 22. You've already talked about we're going to have one last AME bout. We're going to try to make a pro debut if all the stars align at some point during the summer. But when you like look back at all the AME ones that you've had, all the amateur fights, what one was the most difficult for you? It has to be my last one by far. Honestly, Brett Floyd gave him a lot of credit. He's a tough dog. He came forward. It was definitely the most like um, adrenaline I felt during a fight because like I broke my hand in the first round, and I knew like in the moment that my hand was broken. And in my head, I was like, all right, well, I still got to fucking win this fight. Like, I came in and do work. Like, this is my job. I'm going to win it. I'm going to get the job done. So that was definitely by far my toughest amateur fight, besides probably my first amateur fight because I lost, right. um, which, like, honestly, like, looking back at it, I wasn't doing the right things necessary to win. And it's, like, honest, like, uh, honest look at myself where it's, like, I wasn't doing the right things. I was a young kid just thinking that I was going to go out there, punch a kid once, and he's going to go down when I should have been focusing on more other things like my wrestling, my jiu-jitsu, becoming a more well-rounded fighter. Um, but I'd probably say either my last amateur fight or my first amateur fight, either one of them will, will probably be the toughest one, uh, my toughest one so, uh, so far. But probably my last one, to be honest. It was a tough fight. I had a lot of adrenaline going in, like during the fight with my hand breaking and a lot of just like fight or flight where it's like I had to bite down my mouthpiece, I had to go forward, I had to out grapple, and it was like, Every inch, like if he gave an inch, I was taking another one and just keep going forward. And uh, yeah, I think that's freaking. Are you excited that your uh, record's going to reset here? Oh yeah, no, honestly, I'm kind of. <laughs> I'm looking for. It's funny because I I see other fighters do this. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to say <laughs> names, but it's like fighters go one and zero pro, and next thing you know, on their social media, it's undefeated <laughs> professional fighter, and I'm like. And I've seen amateurs do it too, and I'm like, well, you have one fight, yeah. so it's not like even like, like three. Is kind yeah, of like, I'm like, what well, are you like five and zero, four and zero? I'm like, yeah. you're on, you're an undefeated yeah. professional fighter, yeah. undefeated amateur fighter. Boom, support it. But when you're one and zero, I'm like, ah. I'm like, you're one fight though. Let's like Bill's calm down. Those are gonna be undefeated. <laughs> <laughs> Undefeated professional fighter, uh, yeah, and you have to have like undefe an undefeated merch line that shows up. Yeah. Everything, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Remarkable, undefeated, <laughs> remarkable more yeah, I, I think it's freaking fantastic. Yeah, uh, settle down, little turbos. I think uh, four or five. That seems that's. I'm good with that. That that yeah. seems like a good requirement. Ryan, let's let's talk about your uh, 2021. Mostly good. Uh, we got yeah. two. We got two really uh, good guys that you fought that you were able to win. Um, you you split against Adam Defritis. I don't know if I'm saying his name correctly. That was last spring, and then you fought the Golden uh, Ferris Golden, and you were able to tap him out. The last fight doesn't go your way. That was a tough fight, man. I watched that fight. That, very tough. Yeah. That was a that was a tough fight, and um, I think there are a lot of people that would have given up and quit and not have taken some of the shit that I had to, that I saw you take. Like you're a tough dude, man. And I, I want you to I wanted to give you the opportunity. Like what have you been up to since that fight and like when are you looking at getting back out there? Um well first I'm I'm looking to get back in soon now. You know, I, I think the last year, the past twelve months, I fought very frequently. I felt like I was in like a one perpetual fight camp. Mm -hmm. uh, it didn't start feeling like a job, but it was kind of, you know, you're in the grind consistently, constantly cutting away, constantly fighting. And I love it, but this was a nice little reset for me. Um, like we said, we're, whether we have a fight or not, we're never out of the gym. And I felt like this time off made me really, I feel like there's always these moments where I'm constantly falling back in love with fighting. And I kind of feel like I had that in this time off, you know, mm -hmm. not having a fight date, not having a schedule and just kind of going and just training for like the love of it made me fall back in love with it. Um, and, you know, I forced myself to just get better, you know, look, look at my game, look where I'm good at, um, identify my uh, my weaknesses and try to get better. So it's been like fun. It's been like I feel like a student again. I'm in the learning process again. Um, and, you know, just just figuring out what works. Like at, at this point, I'm like, I'm not afraid of failure. So it's like I'll go in the gym and I'm like, all right, you know, maybe I'm going to come in. I'm going to try some new techniques and maybe everybody's going to run through me. But that's OK, because I need to figure it out through failure first. And um I've just been having fun with it. Um, now we're kind of tightening things up, and uh, I'm looking to get back in probably around April, if I can. April, man, I think is a good date for me. Uh, the guy that you fought, he was a, he's a tough dude, and you're only going to get better when you fight 
tough guys like that. Um, there are a lot well, of people when they just kick off their pro career, you go to the topology, you see who they're fighting, and uh, it's not really impressive. It's like you're padding your career like a boxer. Yeah. Like you need to to get to the where you want to go. You like you have to fight these guys. I give Ryan the most credit out of any professional fighter I know. Like me personally, like local professional fighter, where Ryan's had no easy fights, and Ryan has never turned down. Like I'm not just saying this because he's like right next to me, but <laughs> it's like I think before <laughs> not a single fight that he's ever been offered that he ever turned down, and he's always been like the CFFC. Like you need me to fight someone, I will fight them. I don't care who they are, I don't care what their record are, I don't care how good they're looking. He's gonna go out there and fight them. He's the toughest guy I know. I, I feel like maybe it's not like you know. Maybe I need to manage my career a little bit better now, but I just they never had that in me. Like you send me a guy, I'm like, don't even have to look at the record. I'm like, cool, son of contract. Like doesn't matter to me. Like the um the golden fight, like I went through like four opponents for that camp and um got matched up with him like two weeks before and every opponent previous to that, I'm like, just send the contract, don't sign it. You know, mm-hmm. you all ended up going through and I ended up getting him and it was okay. But you know, for me it's like that's you know, you can pad your record, but like at the end of the day, I need to go to sleep with my head on the pillow, knowing that I'm doing the absolute best that I could, knowing that I'm challenging myself. Um, you know, I don't know how things are going to be going forward, but I just don't see that changing. You know, mm-hmm. um, I think that's like a fast track to the top too. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, you might have a couple of stains on your record, but it's like, if you're fighting tough guys, you're not turning down fights and you're putting on good performances is like, who, who wouldn't want to see that guy fight, you know? And then you see people who pad their the records and then they get to the big show and it's like, then they find out who they are. Like, I already know who I am now on the regional scene. So when I get to the next level, it's going to be like, oh, like there's no surprises for me. You know, like I've been here before. I've faced tough competition before. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm already born bred for that. Go ahead, Bill. It looks like you had something really smart to say. Oh, uh, I was going to say, he, <laughs> he said it. He said it already, but um, I was – um. One of our good friends, Frank Wells, he's a pro fighter for CFFC 145. And we were having an in-depth conversation about that, how like a lot of people have the records where it's like, and then they make it to the big promotion and it shows where it's like, all right, you only fought people that were lesser level of you, where you know, like to say you're going to outstrike them and be able to keep a standing every single time. You never went up against someone that might push you to out of your comfort zone a little bit until you made it to the big promotion. And then you make it to the big promotion, you go up against a tough SOB and then they put you down in the one way that you never wanted to fight someone. So it's like, I think it shows where it's like, you're fighting tough guys now. So then once you make it to the bigger promotion, the bigger show, you're going to be able to perform. Like you're not going to go out there to that big promotion with your padded record, fight one tough guy, someone that doesn't give up too easily. And next thing you know, you give up and give it. I, I also, you, you said it before too, is like you, you, the experience you get from fighting tougher people, even through loss is like, it's like the growth you get from that. Because I was just talking to my wife about it last night. Cause we we're just talking about my training and what I'm doing going forward. And it was funny. Like I'm actually implementing some of the, I'm taking some of the stuff that got done to me. I'm going to, you know, that's in my arsenal now, you know, because you, you know what it feels like. So it's like, Kind of like when um, DP fought Khabib, you know, he gets taken down, he gets his leg strapped, and then you see the next fight, Dan Hooker, he's doing it to him. So it's like you always right. take a little piece out of everybody you fight and put it into your own game. So it's it's pretty interesting, you know. I'm excited to come out and, and show, like, the new product, you know. I'm excited for you, too, Um, you know, because the one shitty part is after you come off a tough L, you don't know when you're going to fight again. It's like, yeah. well, fuck, yeah. I don't know when I'm going to fight again, and... Yeah, it's a that that that's a long that's that can be a long wait, and you know because you have to clear suspension, you might have to rehab certain injuries, go through a wait for uh, yeah. the right opportunity, go through a camp, and before you know it, nine months have gone by since you last fought, and that you you could like stew on that L for a while, and you you just your mentals just really have to be squared away, and. Before I let you go, like I, there's one real important question I wanted to ask both of you. Do you, do either of you corner each other for your fights? Yeah, yeah, he he's cornered me pretty much my whole career, like majority of my fights. Okay, he's my, hi. So I asked that question: Are you more nervous for his fights than your fights? Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. We, uh, what, I, I don't know what fight it was, but we fought. Like a week apart from each other. It was when you fought, um, what was the name of the Canadian cat? Oh, yeah, Adam. Adam when he DeFreitas. fought Adam, whatever the hell is like. DeFreitas? For CFFC. It was like he fought. Oh, even at the um, when he fought Golden. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Both of them, it was like yeah. when he fought um, Adam, 
I fought a week, 10 days later. Like, I yeah. took the fight on, at his fight, pretty much. Mm-hmm. And then when I fought my last fight, he fought the following week. And that, that was, like, too, because we had to do his weight cut. Then we had to drive to Split Rock, which is, like, where, I mean, like, like, like Harmony. Harmony. You know, do that. And, like, I'm cutting weight, too, because it's, like, I'm into my fight week now. You know, and then mm-hmm. we come back, and then it's, like, we're right back into me for my, my weight cut. And fighting is, obviously, like, you have to be very selfish. Mm-hmm. But, like, that week... I just remember thinking, I'm like, you know, if if God was like, you know, only one of you can win, I'm like, he's the only person in the world that would be like, I'd rather see him win than for me to get to win it. You know what I mean? Like, if it came down to it, you know, so when he's there, it is the most nerve-wracking thing. I don't care when I'm in there, you know what I mean? Yeah, I yeah. He's, the he, yeah. he's a psycho. He doesn't care when he's in there, you yeah. know what I mean? But me fighting, it's like, it's, it's, it's upsetting, you know, because you have no control of the situation you know if you ask anyone who's ever seen me during one of ryan's fights i'm <laughs> usually like borderline tears in my eyes i'm like even if i'm winning or losing yeah. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm usually screaming things that i shouldn't be screaming at all i'm like great <laughs> like it's not even like solid coaching at this point i honestly i lost my shit his last night a little bit yeah oh no no it's actually it's actually really funny i made fun of him about this a few times because there's a point where it's like the whole game plan was to keep it striking and not to go against cage not to grab one the kid was like the kid has the it's a brown ball jitsu he has submission win and um i the kid pushed me against the cage i turned him and i started dirty boxing him against the cage (laughs) and when you go back and rewatch the fight like on the live stream i have him against the cage for 10 seconds like the clock shows 10 seconds and all you hear is ryan off the cage (laughs) off the cage two like normal ones and then him like a hyena get off the cage Oh and it's usually like not my approach. Like I try to be more like tactical and like calming exactly. when I'm in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> and that it was like I just lost it. I lost oh, it. The king. I always ask that question because when fighters corner each other, I often hear like, "Dude, like cornering is like way more fucking intense than fighting." Like a hundred percent. For sure. About you, Ryan, is just having come off that last bout. You already talked a little bit about when you're looking at getting back out there, but as far as your 2022 goes in general, like what does a successful 22 look like for you? Um, before, I think like 2021, my goal was like, I want to get to the UFC as fast as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why I was taking fights consistently, um, fighting tough opponents. And I was like, I just want to get there, get there, get there, get there. And I'm changing my outlook. And this was like, obviously that's the goal is to be a world champion, get to a bigger promotion you know but now it's like my approach is i'm just taking out one fight at a time i'm not looking ahead i'm not looking behind i'm just trying, trying to stay in the moment and i feel that if i just do the right things that i'm going to get there regardless so instead of just focusing so much on you know on the outcome i'm just focusing on my performance focusing about just being in the moment and you know whatever's going to come is going to come uh not trying to get too ahead of with it and there's going to be opportunities for both of you um with the with the vid that's running around, uh, fights are dropping off all the time. Uh, they're always looking for people, and you never know, man. Like Bellator could call you up and be like, "Yo, we need somebody." They do it all the time. Yeah, yeah, that's what we need. Dude. Yeah, I think that's gonna probably be the route. I feel like most people get in like yeah. that. It's like, hey, oh, can you make it on one week's notice? You know, you're yeah. gonna fight a tough. But you doing us this favor, we'll give you a little contract on the back end. I've talked to like work. three or four guys that happened to. Let's get to some questions that some people ask you guys. Um, I don't know what one of these. I don't know what one of these uh, is, Bill. This is one of your homies. You have to like translate I, it. I, I, I already don't want to know <laughs> if it is. If it's anything, <laughs> I already don't want to do this. Bill, would you rather have say? Oh God! Oh God! What does that do mean? I, do I? It's from a show. Well, what's like the show? A, it's an anime. <laughs> oh jeez, you're one of those. You're one of those nerds. Hey, yes. hey, hey, not really. It's like an undercover thing. But you know, I need to put me on blast about this. Right yes, <laughs> you need to put me on. Yes. Most people don't know that I follow said anime, oh, and it's a popular one. Oh and my god, you virgin! That's the, the was, lamest damn. thing I've ever heard. <laughs> he makes fun of me about oh, it all the time. Yeah. But awesome, Bill, you fucking dork. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna click skip button on this question and let's hope it never happened and act like <laughs> I'm I am leaving it in. Fuck you. This is a good question. This is a good question. Uh who is the nicest opponent you've ever fought? 
Oh. Mm. Um. Honestly, it's the last guy I fought was really fucking nice. <laughs> like we were really chill before and after the fight. It was kind of weird too because it was like a brutal fight, but he was yeah. very, very nice. All right. Um, Yam yeah. Yamel is is that that's his name right? Yanel Yam yeah. Yamel. Yeah. Very Yamel? nice guy. Yeah. Um. I thought this kid was shot. Rashad. Rashad. Mm -hmm. Sound like that. Rashad um, Gonzalez. He, that guy. Yeah. He uh, um. It's funny because I've heard like him. I've heard stories of him and like his other opponents not seeing eye to eye and having like beef like before and after the fight. But he was really nice to me in reality. Like shook my hand. This and that. I didn't touch gloves with him just because like the fight beforehand he like. The kid that he was fighting, they, like, had beef and they were arguing and issues, you know, during the lead-up. And he, like, went to, like, swing on the guy while touching gloves. So I didn't touch gloves with him, but me and him were very cool, very civil before and after the fight. Okay. Um, who is the most annoying fighter in the UFC right now? Ooh. Ooh. Conor McGregor. <laughs> yeah, true. true. Um, he's up there. Um, I don't know. Um... I Leon's kind of annoying, but I also think he, I think he's a good fighter. But yeah. I also do like I found it really annoying when he was sitting out for like a year and a half, saying mm -hmm. like "give me the title, uh, give me the title fight" without like fighting anyone in the top ten. Like he took a year and a half off of just sitting there. and was like I had to serve the title fight. But I do admit Leon's a really good fighter. Like I think he's really technical. I think he's top dog at a top dog at one seventy, not the top dog because response the truth. But I do think he's like you know Leon's like top five, top six. But I don't agree. I don't like fighters that sit around and like haven't beaten anyone and just make demands and like call for the title shot. So I did not like that. And I'm not a Colby Covington fan. I knew it was coming. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. not a Colby Covington fan. Yeah. He he talks shit about Matt Hughes after um yeah the Robbie Lawler fight. And Matt Hughes is like one of my favorite yeah. fighters of all time. It was like after Matt got hit by that train, he was like, just like your boy Matt Hughes, Robbie Lawler. <laughs> It's coming out of the way. And I understand it was all for, like, you know, to hype up everything. But I'm a huge Matt Hughes fan. So it was like hearing that, I was like, fuck you, Colby. Right? Keep my man out of your mouth, right? Dude, uh, Colby is, like, th to me, he is so cringe, he's good. Like, yeah, yeah. like, like his shit talking is so bad, it's good. Like, I can't help it. Like, honest to God, I'm not saying this to be funny. If I saw in real life Kamara Usman, see, I have to like pause and slow down because I immediately want to call him Marty Fake Newsman. Like, I just, <laughs> I just do. I call Marty all the time. Like that's yeah. usually if I refer to him, I'm a big Usman fan. I'll be like, oh yeah, Marty, Marty, yeah. Marty. Like, like Marty Fake Newsman. Like when I heard it the first time, I was like, that is so bad. It's good, and I, I, I just, I can't help it. I like Colby Covington personally. Um, I like. I like the way he Me fights. Too, yeah. Just it, real tall. Right? It's so, well, yeah. it's you, you know, it's all like a gimmick, right? I know, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I think I like that as a gimmick, and he did it to save his career. But I also mm -hmm. can't. Stand at it's the also like time. it's also like you're, you're past that point now. Yeah, you know yeah. Like, yeah. It's almost like yeah. like. He's like everyone like, knows how good you are now. Like you, you've made yeah. your millions at this point, so that makes sense. Dude, he is like I think he's the second best welterweight in the world besides Osman. Like mm -hmm. I yeah. think it's always Osman be like just above him. Yeah, but yeah. I think. Probably everyone else at 170. I agree. 100%. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I completely agree with that. I know the question said most annoying fighter in the UFC, but if we don't put the UFC qualifier on it, for me, it's got to be Dylan Danis. He is the yeah. most right. annoying <laughs> dude ever. So I had a bet show uh, with my buddy from Australia, and I lost, so I had to, like, Right, I had to write a bunch of bullshit about why I thought Dylan Danis was so good, dude. Like ten people unfollowed me, and like I got like I got like three DMs by people people basically saying like like bro, yeah, bro, like you're the most dumb guy ever, and and I just liked what their comment was. Like I didn't even respond. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> Dylan Danis fights like gas tendon, like a gas tendon, like guys, like Peltro comes up, like, oh, you work at a Seven Eleven, you're overweight, you never trained before, yeah. you want to fight next weekend? <laughs> yeah, I think that guy needs help, man, for sure. Uh, gents, I had a really good time. Oh wait, you know what? I have one more question. I this is probably the most important question. I hope I don't anger too many people, but I didn't, I didn't make this up. That you know, we're gonna go through the tape. Some random wants to know Paige Van Zant or Mackenzie Dern. That's all it says. 
Yeah. Neither. Neither. <laughs> Good answer. Yeah. Good answer. Fight. Especially fight style too. I mean, like yeah, I like, see the wedding ring. Good answer. What about you? Yeah. Though? <laughs> but yeah, you know, fight fight style. Uh, realistically, too, you know, like Paige is like it, it's kind of a shame when you bring her up too, because it's just like you got to go to bare knuckle to actually get paid. You know what I mean? Or go to OnlyFans just to get paid. It's like we're professional athletes. No other sport is doing this. You know. I also do. Paige going to bare knuckle was like a bad move on her career overall. Where it's like she's not a boxer. Like she doesn't like even like her MMA wins like. Her highlight reel, her biggest highlight highlight reel win is her doing that jumping, uh, like the scissor kick, jumping scissor kick, mm -hmm. and it's like that's her biggest win. And like she's always showed, like when she fought like Felicia Sharing, she won by ground and pound. Like she's always showed, like in her MMA career, she wins by fighting MMA, not boxing. And then she goes to bare knuckle, and it's like, oh, you're gonna beat, you're gonna get beat the fuck up. Like you're not a boxer. And also, since she makes so much money off of being like this pretty girl persona, and then she's mm -hmm. going out there getting punched <laughs> in the face, bare knuckle, getting stitched up every single fight, which like she says she doesn't care about, but it's like, all right, you don't care, but then eventually that's gonna have something to do with like your income because people like you as this like like pretty attractive girl. Yeah, and now I I would have thought like, for me, um, yeah, <laughs> I, we'll, we'll just we'll assume they're talking about a fighting context and nothing unsavory. We're going to assume that. When I think of Mc, or, or I'm sorry, when I think of Paige Van Zant, I'm very very surprised she didn't end up in Bellator. Perfect Me fit. Too. I thought sure. you know you have instantly somebody that you can market a Valerie Lareda type. Um, she'll mm -hmm. probably never be a serious contender, but as long as you keep signing people off the streets to go fight her. The, mm -hmm. the, I mean, right, and you pad her record up mm -hmm. and make her, like, the first, second fight probably tops of a main card. There you go. It just made so much sense to me. I'm surprised that never happened, but she had to have chased the money. Like, had to have. 100%. 100%. And I was so shocked when she went to Bear Nobble. Like, I thought, just like you, I thought she was going to be going to Bellator, like, good, like taking easier fights, you know. Right, like, right record making her look good but then she went to bare knuckle now she's going to bare knuckle like not looking so good and i think she might have like one more play on her contract or she might have resigned bare knuckle. I'm not exactly sure. they'll bring her back though I, yeah. it doesn't matter she can get her head blown off the next fight and they'll sew it back on for her and bring her yeah. back wow. you know, she, i wholeheartedly i thought I, like she would take like, one big l from bare knuckle and be like all right i'm gonna go elsewhere like let's try yeah. bellator let's try one fc let's try maybe mm. grappling or anything else do you think mackenzie dern will like ever be do you get number one I, let me back up do you think she's a serious contender it, isn't she fighting tisha torres did they announce that or well the Rodriguez fight was last october and then before that she beat nina nunez jandrobia Marcos, Hannah Cyphers. So, like, you look and she she hasn't fought in bums, but like, has she like really beat anybody? That's like, wow. I don't think she'd be able to hang with like the top one fifteen, like um, <clears throat> like Rose or uh, Wally. Like, I think either one of them put it on her pretty badly. I think she'll always be like one of those girls that's like she'll probably be like top five, top ten. But I don't ever think she'll be like the champ. She'll probably fight for the belt of some sort, or like sometime, you know. Mm -hmm. Bill, you weren't being fake news. You're right. UFC 273 oh, oh, mm -hmm. in April. Yeah, oh. Tisha Torres. There we go. Yeah, I think Tisha Torres is probably going to beat her because I think Tisha Torres is hard to take down. I do not see Mackenzie Dern being able to outstrike Tisha, uh, Tisha Torres. She, like, Tisha comes forward, spinning attacks, a lot of kicks, a lot of punches, and I think uh, that she'll stop Mackenzie's takedowns and keep it standing. I think, I, yeah, I think Mackenzie has a limited uh, pathway. Um, mm -hmm. Like, she needs to use jiu-jitsu. She needs a sub. And if she can't find that, then she's in trouble. I don't know. Well, I think, guys, gents, I think we did it. Um, you guys are freaking amazing. Uh, even you, Bill. You, you, like, you were m more crisper than I thought you would be this time around. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> he, he breaks out the best of me. What can I say? I can't look bad for you know no you guys uh are freaking awesome um i want to give you the uh gents the opportunity to have the last word though so if there's uh anything that you wanted to plug or anyone you want to shout out i wanted to give you a chance to do that before i let you go i see the huge plug is his title fight coming up uh you know it's been, you know i feel like everybody's been waiting for his pro debut because it's like he trains like a professional he acts like a professional you know fights like one 
Um, so to put a cap on his amateur career with a title fight is going to be fantastic. And that that's like the huge plug. You know, what, what's it? Do? March 26th, uh, Lake Harmony, PA, for Maverick MMA, fighting for the belt. Right on. Um, I think we got to plug, obviously, our coaches. You know, we have a phenomenal coaching staff, yeah. and we work with a lot of coaches from Nicotone MMA, Combat Academy, Shirty Rock, Sean Santella, Nicotone, um, Dan Doyle, Fabio Mandanero. Since we work with high level coaches, that we couldn't do this without them. And 100%. obviously, like our simple sponsors, like Fit Food, Fit Food NJ, you know, highly recommend. Um, and yeah, and honestly, I think the big thing is that we're going to be making a huge 2022. All of us. We're all making moves. <laughs> yeah. There's no way I can feel it. about it. Like, this is the year. It uh, is. It is it, it is the year, man. Like, now's the time to get on this fucking boat, man, because I'm not going to have time to turn this fucking shit around if you aren't on. So, yeah. I mean, Can't be no. train. Oh. <laughs> Dude, this is the fucking platinum battleship, baby. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Dude. you don't want any boat from this platinum battleship. Yacht, platinum <laughs> battleship. <laughs> Dude, a platinum yacht battleship. Like, you know, um, when McGregor beat uh, when he lost to Floyd and he bought that huge like, Mercedes <laughs> yacht of some sort, the Lambo yacht, that's what you are. Right? Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. And you know what? I'm just gonna, you know, just blow random shit up, you know? Hell yeah, dude. Do what you gotta do. Yeah. That, that, you know, living the uh, the Joe Rogan life, man. That's what I'll be Boy, doing. I gotta, I'm here to take pot. We're here to take over a lot. We're here to take over. <laughs> that's, that's eerie. It's, you're strangely good at that. <laughs> <laughs> surprised that we went through the whole thing without him coming out in the voice to the very end. Uh, I'm very proud. I'm, I don't like Connor, but I like doing an Irish accent. All right. <laughs> he likes Anna, this He line? doesn't like Connor. He likes Anna. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, hey! I didn't that cut canceled. I might. I, okay, I might do you that favor. I might edit that one, but all the other unflattering <laughs> things that you said, I'm leaving in. God, buckets. JG, I want to let you know because he's going to watch this. Buckets, next time I see you, we're going to be grappling. Oh, oh. Everyone, hey, uh, everyone, Bill likes anime. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we'll, we'll talk soon, man. Uh, appreciate your time. We'll do it again, okay? Please. Right, thank you for, thank you for everything, brother. Yep, you got it, guys. Take care.